What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video back on Riverside Royals Dynasty. We are eight wins, two losses doing quite well. And we are also knocking on the door of being ranked for the first time in program history. A couple things to correct. It is season three. For a few episodes, I guess I was confused. I was saying season four. Obviously it is season three. This is the third year of the Dynasty, even though we sped quickly through the first two seasons and even this season to a degree. I think things have gone very, very quickly. We are currently ranked 30th, essentially, which is not ranked, but that's where our ranking is outside the top 25. And with a win today, I think there's a decent chance we can actually push inside the top 25 and become ranked. Now, our two losses on the season, we have Florida, who is number one, who is undefeated in the SEC, and San Diego State. Now, we're kind of having the UCF effect a little bit where because of the conference that we play in and our history, we're being underrated a little bit. Despite being eight and two, other teams who I don't think have played as well as we have are being ranked ahead of us. And now, yes, Florida, the number one team in the country that you can lose to that team and, and still be considered highly. And San Diego State, I haven't come up with an excuse for that one yet, but come on guys, let us in. Give us some more votes. There's a chance with a win today that we will be ranked for the first time ever, which I'm extremely excited about. What else? Uh, in the, I think, San Diego State game, John Humphreys was open on the left side on a, on a play. The CB didn't even really cover him. But if you guys played football or, or know football, you know there's such a thing as a, a progression where you will often read one side of the field and work over depending on what the play is. But when there are you know, multiple routes on one side of the field and you're looking over there, the receiver on the other side is not involved in the progression. So sometimes I'm, I am gonna miss guys just because you know it's easy to see on your phone or when you're watching the video. But in real time, it is pretty tough to see somebody that isn't involved in the play and check them out. I'm gonna to try to do a better job of getting John Humphreys the football when he gets open, but sometimes I am just gonna miss it. I'm human, can't really say anything more than that. And then the final play of that game where I threw a quick ball to, I wanna say it was, was it Elgin Collins? Doesn't really matter. Could have been Aaron Duvall as well. Quick little hitch. It was a bad throw, but there was a wide open Reggie Gonzalez literally right over the middle. Didn't see him. It's going to happen, obviously. Just can't see everybody. And uh, when I'm, you know, thinking that the play, we're going to get pressure sent at us. Got to get the football out really quickly. It's kind of I'm making a, a, a decision before the play happens, which is a thing. It is what it is. But we're not worried about that right now. We're going to lose games. That is a human element. That's what makes this fun, I think, is losing so that the wins feel more important. But there's a lot going on today as Marion Bates, five-star receiver out of Poughkeepsie, New York, could be the next Riverside Royal. Adam Daniel right there with him. Another five-star. We could land two five-stars before the offseason. Major stuff still in pursuit for guys like Terrence Brown, for guys like Willie Hollins out of Biloxi, Mississippi. We're trying to build out that New Jersey pipeline. So Marcus Miller, 68 overall, three-star corner out of Carteret, could be very, very big for our program's future. Still going after some of these guys. I'm excited about the potential. I added some new guys to the board as well. So if they are NA, that means we can't add any points to them this week. But we're going to figure out if we have a chance to land them after this game and in the next week. So you've seen the recruiting class so far. I've seen the comments. You guys want Justin Bennett to be the quarterback. He's a four-star athlete from Riverside. This is the Riverside Royals. But I'm not sure that he is going to be our QB. I like him a lot as a receiver. I do. He's maybe a little slow for the position. He looks like he'd be a very good quarterback too. We have options. He will be playing quite a bit. The story of being a Riverside kid, I think is incredible, but also the fact that he's amazing makes it so that he's gonna see the field. So there's a lot going on, but in order to really make that happen and get some other recruits, we got to focus on winning now. So these guys want to stay coming to our school and, and you know being productive on the field. So 
Uh, all worried about the win. Do we have any guys visiting today? That's the last thing I want to check. We got huge points from actually getting these guys to visit. But as far as I can tell, no one is actually going to visit today. Except for Willie Holland. Ready for a visit. And this just became a huge game. Three sacks with the D-line. Two tackles for loss with D-line. And beating a conference team. This would be massive. Now, we are the only team to offer him a scholarship. Willie Hollins is really, really, really good. He's a three-star, but there are some you know, huge schools involved. But this is a major visit now because Willie Hollins, with a victory, with accomplishing those goals, which is you know basically doing well with the D-line, we're going to get a really, really, really good recruit. Can't emphasize that enough. Eight and two. We are five and one in the Mountain West. This is a huge game against Boise State. Got to come out on top. Really cannot emphasize enough how important this game is. Huge recruit coming. A win could put us into the top 25 for the first time ever. We need a win, and I would prefer to get it done in convincing fashion. We have one of the best passing offenses in the league this year. We get the ball in the end zone via rushing touchdown quite often. The other numbers don't look great. It's pretty much a lot of passing to get down, and then as soon as we get on like the one or the two, run the football in. But that's Riverside offense under Andy Byers and Reggie Gonzalez this year. Willie Briggs, of course, plays a big role as well. But yeah, getting Willie Hollins would be massive for our program, and getting a win, getting into the top 25, would also be massive for our program and our legacy, our history, and our future. But live at Royal Field, Boise State Broncos, Riverside Royals. Let's get a win. Of course, stats with the D-line, very important as well. We just got to play our game. Our D-line has played very well this season. A lot of you have pointed out how great Adrian Chandler has been at left end. Yeah, he's kind of been an unsung hero. I'll give you that. He's been really, really good. Joel Pitts has been phenomenal. And I think that the true freshman Phil Walker has played really, really well as well. So we'll continue that trend hopefully today as there's going to be pressure and Bachmeyer goes down. Sacked by Craig Jackson. Now... That's not a great start. And here's why. Craig Jackson is an outside linebacker. As for the game, that's great. That's great. But as for getting Willie Hollins and getting his, his goals met as a recruit, visiting recruit, it doesn't actually help us. Even though he's playing on the D-line, counts as a linebacker. So it might be a lot of Craig Jackson playing off the ball today. Even though I really do like him as a pass rusher. Bachmeyer's going to fire. And that's going to be caught by Hopper. Ty Neal Hopper with a 34-yard grab. In traffic, no less. Tim Washington right there. But as we know, Tim Washington has the worst ball skills in college football. He is absolutely useless. What we have to hope for from him is that he just completely takes away the receiver so that the quarterback doesn't even try to throw it. Because if they do throw it, it's not going to be a pick. It probably isn't even going to be a pass deflection as we kind of got run out of there with the safety Bruce Clemens. I thought we were going to be in position for the tackle, but something weird happened. We kind of just like ran away. It's a run. It's an option play. Actually, it's a counter as Holani's going to lose a yard courtesy of Craig Jackson continuing his great year. I think it's easy to point to Adrian Chandler or Joel Pitts and say, okay, that's been the best defensive player this year. Even even Greg Hall, right? But Craig Jackson is right at the top. He's impressed me so much, and I really didn't expect him to be the guy that took a huge jump as like our best defensive player. But I gotta say, he's been phenomenal. He really has been. 10-yard rush for Danny Smith. Third and inches. It's gonna be a run. Brown, big hit. And Halani will not gain a, even an inch. That's the true freshman, Joseph Brown, coming down, laying the hit. And fourth and inches. They got jumbo personnel, fullback in there. It's going to be a handoff. Hall got blocked. And that will be a George Halani touchdown. All right, Boise State came to play. Kind of a smash mouth drive. Not bad. Nine plays, 70 yards. We're going to have a ball game today. Got to have this offense play well. Now... This is probably a bad time to do it, but I am trying out a new playbook. Usually, and it's just because I said it in the first ever episode of this, I said it as the Air Raid playbook. I tried it now. It's called One Back. 
So I don't know what that is. I'm not familiar with that, but maybe it just centralizes around like one running back, just under center plays with this, you know, single back. That could be it. In fact, it probably is. We'll find Elgin Collins, but I assume it's still going to have gun formations. I'm not really sure though. I mean, we'll see. Maybe this is a lot of under center stuff, but Reggie Gonzalez, as I said in a previous episode and then kind of forgot about it, has been much better for more traditional under center runs. So if our offense can be better by, you know, changing the consistency of formations that we call, I'm going to do it. Reggie Gonzalez is our first five star in school history. We want to get him playing like a five star. And it's been a little bit difficult at times. He certainly flashed, had a great, great game very recently, but we need just a little bit more consistency out of him and some of those big splash plays. And I think a lot of it can be attributed to a poor offensive line. You know, they've played like as well as you can ask from them, but they're not exactly out here dominating teams. Hopefully that changes as the series progresses. As we'll try a screen and the blocking just isn't there. Gonzalez trying to stay up and makes it a pretty short fourth down. And from midfield, if you think we're punting, you're out of your mind. Speed option's a bit dangerous, but I trust Willie Briggs in the backfield. We're going up the middle with Andy Byers, and we will slide forward for another easy first down with our quarterback. Last year of Andy Byers, it's really the only year that we've seen from him, and unfortunately, I really think it is fair to give him a medical redshirt and keep him another year. It just isn't an option. I can't change his age. So, you know, I'm very frustrated about that. I really wish we could keep him for another year because the fact that we signed this junior college transfer player and we can only have him for one season is just ridiculous because he was injured for, you know, pretty much all of last year. Got injured on a sack as I just don't like that. <laughs> There's nothing really seemed to get open as far as I could tell. This is a weird speed option. We're going to pitch it out to Reggie Gonzalez. I don't like that play. I'm never going to call it again. It was four yards, but it was a stressful four yards. I didn't like it at all. Michael Ham. Do I like Michael Ham on this? He won at the line. Oh, we're under pressure. Fire's not fast enough. Can barely get the throw away, and we're going to have to settle for a field goal try on fourth and six. We are in field goal range. I'm not going for it. Andy Byers is gassed. They got pressure right up the middle, right in the A-gap. And uh, we're going to just take our points. I think this is field goal range. The kick from Finch is up and good. And the Royals are on the board. Still down in this game. But we did get points. If you finish every single drive with points, I think you're going to win a lot of your games. So we'll just, you know, continue to try and score. I think our defense will be capable of getting a stop or two against this Boise State team. And let's hope so, at least. Run right. Hall right in the gap. Picked him up with a block. And Halani with another first down. It's going to be a lot of that today. We struggle to stop the run. We really have at times. Depending on the team, I mean, it, it feels even rude to say we've been gashed because we have made a lot of plays at times, but a lot of times we also haven't. We've just gotten killed for a full 60 minutes. It's been devastating. Bachmeyer under pressure, the football came out! That was Malik with the pressure. Man, we love Malik James. Unblocked off the edge. Forced the fumble. Nearly recovered. I think maybe it was Joseph Brown in the backfield. But we unfortunately couldn't land on it. And that's going to be a lot of yardage. That's a difference of like maybe 30, 40 yards, depending on how this punt goes. It's back to about the 25 and Willie Briggs is stopped. A lot of guys don't want Willie Briggs returning kicks, but he is so elusive back there. And they want, you know, Barrett Reed, the really, really fast redshirt freshman returning kicks. But the, the juking and the agility is a huge factor. And uh, I think we can get more yardage with the slower guy who's more elusive than the faster guy who will uh, struggle to make more guys miss. Because that's just really good coverage. Expected to throw that and have, like, you know, right on the break of the route and have John Humphreys be open. Good ball, but it's never really got the separation. As we're going to take a shot over the top, Michael Ham will catch it! That's how you stack! 
Oh my goodness, Michael Ham, right there. You see him stack the corner, make an adjustment. Deep ball tracking, perfect. Hands, excellent. Big gain from Michael Ham, one of the stars of this Riverside Royals team. One of the reasons that we've been so, so successful this year as we're under pressure with buyers. Trying to throw the ball, that's illegal touching, best case scenario. That's fine. Now, I do love my third and six screens. This might end up acting like one. Texas route, Reggie Gonzalez out of the backfield. Now, there won't be any blockers in front of him, but I'm hoping it'll act like a run. And that's exactly what it does. Reggie Gonzalez up the middle. Big gain for the true freshman, five star. And that play worked to perfection. Now, they sent a blitz. So we were obviously gonna look short try to get the football out quickly and when you vacate the middle of the field like that bring those backers down it's gonna leave the short area of the field over the middle wide open the safeties aren't gonna be able to get up there you know, nearly fast enough and even if they did that could leave the back end open for receivers so when you blitz like that you got to get to the quarterback in order for it to be successful they didn't do it big game for Reggie Gonzalez and we're gonna cap it off with a rushing touchdown straight up the middle untouched over the goal line good blocking up front good drive good defense good everything in the last about five minutes of play or so so i'm liking this fight i'm liking what i'm seeing from riverside i need to see more of it going forward 10-7 royals we need to stick in this defense with four true defensive linemen in the game and just have those guys make plays that's a tackle for loss joel pitts his uh, final season as well. Junior college transfer in his senior year. We love Joel Pitts. Wasn't super impactful last year as a two-way player. This year, as a true defensive end, not playing left tackle at the same time, he's been excellent. He has been excellent. And now, that's a fun trivia question for you because that was kind of a storyline that went under the radar last year is we actually had a two-way player in Joel Pitts. Starting left tackle, starting defensive end. Great stuff from him, but just wasn't impactful enough as a defensive lineman. That guy is, though. Phil Walker, true freshman. Shed the block, got to the quarterback. Bachmeyer never saw it coming. Defense is stepping up. Second sack with the D-line. Some tackle for losses in there as well. I think, no, it's not actually. It's the first sack with the D-line, because the other one was Malik James and Craig Jackson. So never mind. First sack with the D-line. Need a few more of those. But things are looking good. As Willie Briggs showing that agility. Showing that elusiveness. Even if he doesn't have the top end speed. This is also his final year. Want to keep him on the field. Willie Briggs at this point is kind of a, a campus legend. Gonzalez will get four. Rolling out with Byers. Just turn up field before they can get you. Andy Byers on the run. Showing good speed. Juking back to the inside. He put the football on the ground. It's recovered by Elgin Collins. And chaos in Riverside is what this game has been so far. Just go out of bounds. That's not fun. Fumbling isn't either uh, fun. Uh, fumbling isn't fun either, though. So I had a little bit of a stroke there. But I just had a stroke of genius. No, I, I didn't have a stroke of genius. It was an actual stroke. And Salas has space, though. Good gain. <laughs> Third and three. It's got to be checked down City. Reggie Gonzalez shows the power. That's what we're looking for. Five-star freshman. Reggie Gonzalez. I'll remind you, that's our best player by a mile. Biggest recruit ever by a mile. He better be playing like that. Briggs in the game. We're going to run with Byers. I saw Ham for a second. Let's just slide for five. I mean, the band, unquestionably, the best seats in the house. You see them? It's a massive band, too. We might be a small school, community college roots, but we've got a majorly large marching band. I don't know if that means anything, but it's we have it. Willie Briggs up the middle. He'll move the chains. First and goal. That's open enough. See, I was looking. I just wanted the space. And eventually we found it. Michael Ham, Wide open. That's why running zone coverage on the goal line is, is such a high risk, high reward play. Like, yes, you might end up getting an interception. 
because the quarterback is baited on a quick throw and you just happen to be sitting down right there right in the passing lane however if they have a lot of routes out there on the field as we did in that scenario naturally you're gonna leave somebody open michael ham was wide open in that in that sense in that play and we are up 17 to 7. pretty good first half it looked a little bit weird at first but our defense has really stepped up our offense got going a bit and we've got all the momentum right now bachmeyer to throw that's wide open and this offense is capable of moving the football we've seen what they can do we've seen what their running back halani can do so we can't get too cocky can't get too ahead of ourselves got to keep playing good football it's gonna be a run to smith he's got a little bit of space blockers ahead of him they can just do that the whole game i mean they are bigger faster stronger those things are just true shout out kanye even though it better, faster, strong. It's, listen, whatever. It's close. Hall up the middle. He missed. Joseph Brown. That's Sam Brown, actually. Getting stiff arm, but Bruce Clemens came over to make the tackle. We needed to make the tackle initially, at least some type of contact with Greg Hall when we got into the backfield. Didn't end up happening, but we needed to. Because that would have been a big stop. Alani's got pretty good speed, man. But yeah, it is a bigger program historically. I mean, Boise State really only had their coming out party, I guess, at the 2008 Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma. And that was really their best season under uh, Chris Peterson, right? But, like, they have been pretty good over the past decade or so. Not amazing. They Keep in mind, they're a Mountain West school, but they've turned out some pretty good prospects. Some pretty good NFL players. Demarcus Lawrence kind of being at the top of that list right now. Just picture any cowboy, and you got a pretty good shot of them going to Boise State. Cedric Wilson, Leighton Vander Esch. There are a lot more than you'd think. As that's going to be to the end zone, and Ezekiel Sims get beat. I tried to drag him back into that play there, but he gets beat. Couldn't make a play on the football, despite pressing the button. It's the way that goes sometimes. Boise State with their second touchdown, 17-14. I'm a little all over the place right now commentary hasn't exactly been on point so far but you know what we're gonna improve as our team has improved over the course of the game so will the commentary hopefully or it will only get worse but i'm recording videos back to back i better i better start going i like john humphreys it's under thrown he catches it anyway back shoulder db never turned around to find the football big mistake but i feel like we had a step maybe he should have waited a second longer but that's kind of the problem with John Humphreys. He isn't a speed guy. He's not fast. He's not going to be able to outrun a lot of these better corners over the top. That's not his game. So I don't look to do that very often. He's going to fake it around to him. He's a little misdirection. But if I'm looking to take a deep shot, I know he sometimes gets open. But I'm just not really thinking that's going to happen. Yes. Need to just continue to roll out. I tried to just stand tall with Andy Byers deliver a throw back across the middle to John Humphreys which is always a bad decision by the way and it's third and 18 just needed to take what we can get on that one as we'll go up the middle Blake Hayford goes over a Boise State defender that safety got creamed trains coming through get off the tracks and he got blown up concussion CTE broken neck Everything just happened on that play to that strong safety. He's going to stay in the game, though. Even after getting cracked. Barely got that throw away. Hayford in motion, trying to isolate that safety. We're going to go up over the top to the tight end. Hayford at a step. What a great play by Hawkins to get back in that play and break up the pass. I mean, that's crazy that he was able to not only run with Blake Hayford, but actually make a play on the football, save the touchdown. I mean, great effort. Sometimes you just got to give props to the defense. Hayford isn't the fastest guy. If he were any faster, I think it's probably a touchdown. I think it's an easier throw for Byers. I think it's a TD. But he's not that fast, and Hawkins was able to make a really, really nice play. Props to him. We're rolling out. Nobody's accounting for the quarterback. Byers with space. He's going to juke and step out of bounds. First and goal, Riverside. And off up the middle. 
decent enough blocks. Gonzalez will make it second and goal, but from at least a little shorter up. As we're going to go back into the shotgun. Quick snap, Boise State. Gonzalez trying to find space. He got bounced out. We're going to call a timeout. Third and goal. We lost a couple on that try. Do we make this 20 to 14? Yeah, I think we have to. I really don't like this angle, but I think we can nail a kick. And we do. 20 to 14. Tried to run the ball on the goal line. And we just couldn't punch it in. Offensive line overpowered. Gonzalez lost a couple and then kind of forced a pass. At least I felt like we were. Maybe we should have tried read option. Read option's usually a pretty good play. But we are held out of the end zone. Five seconds to go in the half. Teams played well. It's only a six point lead, but it is a lead. We're setting a blitz here. Two seconds remain in the half. I trusted the defensive backs to get over and make a play. Walker under pressure. This is lob deep. Washington can't catch it. I mean, he's so bad at actually catching. Deep shot by Boise State. That's the end of the first half. I mean, of course, we're going to see a clank off the hands of Tim Washington. Did you, did you really think he was going to catch that pick? Start of the third quarter. Briggs would just kneel this down. Touch back. But Riverside football. Getting points before the end of the half was huge. We need more touchdowns. I mean, they are pressed across the board. I am going to look deep. Look at Humphreys first. I mean, maybe we have him. I'm going to trust him to make a play. It, it, you just never get any jump ball animations. It's so tough unless they really have a true step. It really is so tough. Third and nine. I wonder what that deep safety is going to do on that right side. Field safety. We shall see. Looks like zone coverage. I mean, we just couldn't couldn't find anybody fast enough. So it's, I don't know if I like this playbook. I think we have more success running with the quarterback and, and being that, you know, explosive option offense at times. But I don't know if this under center action is for us. It's been a little tough to move the football so far, which is obviously not what we want. We want to be able to make plays, strike quick, win football games. Football came out courtesy of Greg Hall. Craig Jackson dives on it. Greg Hall, the Hall monitor, says not today. 20 turnovers this season. Look at that. I mean, Sam Brown in pursuit too. Are they going to give him credit? I mean, that hit was courtesy of the Hall monitor, 100%. They might give it to, to uh, Sam Brown, though. Run up the middle. Have a little bit of space, but there just isn't a ton. I mean, it is halfback dive, though. It's not really a play where you typically expect a lot of yards. Maybe a stretch will do us a little bit better. Blake Hayford off the end. One-on-one. -on -one. Gonzalez makes a miss. Stiff arming. I mean, that's a great way to fight for extra yardage. That probably isn't a first down with a lot of other backs. But it just isn't... Yeah, it's not a, a super splash fun play. We want some of those. That linebacker coming up. It is. Middle's wide open. It's five. Happy holidays. It's a Michael Buble screen. The bubble. Oh, I was nearly going the other way. I'm not going to do that again. I think I won't throw quick for Ham. You're wrong. Michael Ham, Touchdown. Andy Byers finds his favorite target. He's only a true sophomore, and he's already a Riverside Royals legend. So many big catches, so many big plays, so many clutch moments. This one is second TD of the game. I'll tell you what, though, this recruit that's visiting Willie Hollins, he's watching himself a game. He's watching the Royals turn it on here. It's going to be a run. Uh, okay, Joseph Brown just got stiff-armed into next week. So did Bruce Clemens. <laughs> Halani's a monster. Joseph Brown ends up coming back to make the tackle. But Halani was just throwing off safeties. Jo I mean, uh, that's, that's so violent. That one was no different. Ran past that one trying to make him pay. <laughs> I mean, he just threw off two would-be tacklers. What do you What do you say about that? It's a great run by Halani. We were definitely offsides. 
All right, I need a sack with a D lineman. Let's go out and run three defensive linemen. Great call. It's a run. Can't get, and Bruce Clemens got destroyed. These stiff arms are insane. I mean, I haven't seen people that, well, it doesn't matter. Wow, 30 second half yards so far. That's not great, but it, it's been, you know, it's just starting. But these, these stiff arms are wild, man. I mean, the Boise State Broncos are so stiff, you would think Idaho figured out about Viagra. Reggie Gonzalez run up the middle, nothing doing. Second and 10, they are blitzing. I see Humphreys. We're gonna throw the safer route. Elgin Collins, Michael Ham out in front. Collins, pretty good wheels. Not great, but pretty good. And that is a good gain. Uh, listen, we might have had an option to go to John Humphreys and then Michael Ham, but I thought Elgin Collins was the safest throw there. And then we would have blockers out in front. We need to get this running game going though. I mean, it hasn't been terrible. Just want some splash plays. Is that too much to ask for? Yeah, read option. That's what we got to do. Get the ball to Andy Byers. I mean, it, that happens every play, but look at the space. Good blocks. Byers up the middle. Caught from behind, but a big gain by the Royals quarterback. And those are the type of plays I want to see. I want to see our best players make big plays. Let's get creative. We've seen Michael Ham score at a play much like this before. It's not going to be that. They contained that extremely well. Tried to cut that back up the middle. And, I mean, you saw the result. Third and 13 after an incompletion. We need Michael Hamm on the field to be successful. Uh, that was a predetermined throw. I was going there no matter what. Uh, yeah. Not good. Not good. Donovan Clark with the interception. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about that. My, my bad. Making Andy Byers look like trash. I was watching the drag across the field, and I, I saw this linebacker just hint down. Watch this. Right there. Boom. I'm like, I'm going to the tight end. And I threw it. <sighs> well, we're not going to be able to tackle this, uh, this running back with a safety. A little bit concerned. I don't know how we're going to stop him. If I were Boise State, I would give to the running back every play. It would be the correct decision. You would get a huge stiff arm every play. But instead, they they trust their quarterback to make plays. Here's Halani. Check it out. He just breaks tackles. Read option. Oh, pancake. Oh, it fooled me with Bruce Clemens. Let me just switch off. Let Joseph Brown make the tackle. It's a better decision. Dude, they have these little micro cuts. Look at that little swerve. Look at it. Hate it. It's an option under pressure getting the football away and it's somehow caught he tried to turn around and make a play with Ezekiel Sims it was not to be oh man the user ability has been inability this game unfortunately Boise State still right in this quarterback keeper pursuit with Hall and we got taken out by our own player oh my lord was gonna be right in position to make a tackle and bumbling idiot Riverside Royals player who will remain unidentified. It's right in the way. Quarterback keeper Clemens can't wrap up. Can anybody wrap up on this team? It's the damn quarterback. To me, a touchdown. Uh, it's Austin Bolt, the tight end. Quick slant, wide open. What are you going to do? And we will be down. 28-27. A lot of game left. I do like these games interesting. Maybe not this interesting with a big recruit on the line. We got to run the we got to run the ball here. I mean, they have three down linemen. They have one linebacker pretty much. We got to have this. I mean, they shed the block so quickly. I'm not even on right trigger, dude, but they just I know this is not bad, and I'm not sure if the exact same mechanics in there. It's just like muscle memory at this point to not run behind the line of scrimmage. They just they shed the block so quickly. Now we're running behind the line of scrimmage, running for our life with Byers. Good block, too. This is four down territory, because we're not going to be able to kick a field goal. I, I really don't want to punt. 
We just need to get close enough to make this worthwhile. I, I see Ham. <laughs> I didn't think we'd have the throw. We're gonna have to punt now. Jeez. I, I just don't want to throw a pick in that spot, and we've seen the throw on the runs. I know somehow they're my fault, uh, but uh, I, I we're gonna punt. Unfortunately, it's all right. Trust the defense. Don't know why, but I I'll pretend to do to to do. I'll pretend I do. Paul, nice tackle. Played the run fit. Actually locked on and made the tackle. It's always nice when that actually works. All right, somebody make a play. Malik James, I'll trust you. I'm on Hall. Malik James was just not in position. <laughs> just not. Okay, my defense feels confused. I'm not really sure what's going on there. It'll work to the benefit of the Broncos. We really need to stop. I hate this playbook, by the way. I'm not blaming that for all our faults. But I think it's a contributing factor. First and 10. It's an option. Walker, please. Oh, you got to do that earlier. You're in range. You cannot let Bachmeyer escape out into the open field. It's a mistake. Second and five. We need our defense to make a play. No touchdowns for Boise State. Sam Brown in the hole cannot make the tackle. Make the tackle, please. I beg you. It is the game on the line. There is still time, but it's an uphill battle if they score here. And we have opportunities to, to stop them. Craig Jackson, I don't know what that was after the tackle. It was the craziest devil-worshipping crap I've ever seen. Somebody call a freaking witch doctor or a priest. We need to perform an exorcism on Craig Jackson after the game. If he can play with that devil magic during the game, I'm down. Here's a run. Hall in the gap. Brings him down. Nice tackle. Broncos lose two. Third and 16. Staying in man. I need the back end to play well. They have got three receivers. Tight end's going to be going out on a route. Running back, back across the middle. It's a first down. Oh, God. My DBs, dude. First and goal. Oh, this is this is where we have to bend but not break. We bent our way all the way down the field. We bended and bended and bended. Bachbar gonna run. James, get after him. That's fine. This is a touchdown. It's a good play. They're on the four, but this is where we cannot be broken. We cannot allow a touchdown. It'll be very difficult to win the game if we do. Up the middle, it's Malik James playing linebacker. But he makes a tackle. Lonnie goes down. We're coming out in goal line. I have to trust the D-line to make a play. It's man coverage. We know what that can mean. You can get beat very, very easily on the inside if it's a slant or something like that. We have to have this be a run, and we have to shut it down. It's a pitch outside, and it's a Halani touchdown. All right. Three and a half minutes to play. Our defense did all they could. They got beat down the entire field. Tried to make plays. Couldn't get off the field on third down. We need our offense to step up. It's going to have to be a big play. It's actually still a one score game now the reason i really didn't want to allow a touchdown is because you are banking even if you score which we haven't really been able to do this second half even if you do score we're going to the tight ends pass broke it up you still need the two-point conversion and i think we've been really 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 bad near the goal line today which is uncharacteristic of this team so I don't I don't know what the likelihood of actually converting that two point conversion attempt is. And it's third and nine already. We've shown an inability to move the football, and that inability to move the ball has been very apparent on this drive already. We have one yard. And it, it's just such a bad throw from Andy Byers. It's insane. We cannot punt here. We have to get it. We have to get this. Fourth and nine. That looks open to me. It's intercepted by Skinner. Uh, I had his, how is he not open? And by the way, if you're gonna point to Humphreys being wide open here, 
The safety only came down because I was already throwing to this route. It would not have been a guaranteed touchdown because the safety would have played it over the top. It's a tough spot. Now, I'm not saying that's the right read. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, oh man, I'm perfect. I can never make a mistake. That was clearly a mistake, but I don't really know how many other options we had. Maybe you prefer the one-on-one -on -one in that situation, even though we've seen time and time again that one-on-ones are extreme gambles where most often the receiver won't even try to catch it. Now we're just completely dependent on our defense to shut down Boise State. Completely dependent. I'm run committing middle, and I'm playing brown in case it's a read option. They're actually going to... Why would they pass there? They waited They they waited and waited and waited to waste the entire clock. I guarantee it was a pass only because I ran commit. Freaking computer. I do find it interesting, though, that for a team that ran, like, the majority of first downs over the entire game, that the one time that I run commit, they're like, eh, you know what? We're going to pass on first down with the lead in the fourth quarter. It's bizarre to me. And the clock is still going to run... I, did we go out of bounds backwards? Why is that clock still moving? Get upfield, Reggie. Why is the clock moving? I'm getting out of bounds. Why is the clock running? It's the fourth quarter. You can't miss these throws. I'm, I'm gonna, mm, getting frustrated. You run the ball on fourth and one. Look at the time. I mean, the time doesn't stop uh, anyway, even if I get out of bounds for some reason. You know, explain to me that, why that's happening. Should the clock move on first down? Is that going to happen now? Well, we're not counting it as stopping if I go out of bounds. So I just don't know. Sick throw. Dude, what is happening? Is that off the back foot or something? Read on the field. Do we give him a chance? He's got wheels, fires, hits him over the top, Barrett Reed, big first down. He's got to play more, I'm aware. He's got to play more. It's something we'll think about going forward. I don't know who he plays over this season, though, is the thing. Because Michael Ham's kind of in that role right now, and we have other receivers. I'm not really sure what we do. Fires up the middle, this needs to be a first down. He got freaking destroyed. We still have three times. We are in the game. 100% in the game. Need a touchdown. Snap the ball now, please. Now, please. Play the slant. Quick throw to the back. Why is it so far up the field? Hit him on the break. Are the Am I complaining for no reason? Are these unwarranted complaints? Willie Briggs up the middle. Clock will stop momentarily. Now, the thing that we're counting on, though, as I'm sure you guys know at this point, we are counting on a defensive stop if we're even able to score have to and he's gonna fumble the football oh my god <laughs> uh, that's the game we tried we tried shram unblocked off the edge was just hoping for a receiver to get open and it never happened as far as i could tell i wanted the slant for a minute like we have it there but as soon as i want to throw that we have a a guy in our face how does that go unblocked the right tackle just slid to the left I really don't know what's supposed to happen on that. Oh, that's so annoying. Now it will take a Christmas miracle. This is January when I'm recording. Craig Jackson, nice play. Man! This is a frustrating game. Why did I try to change up the offense? It's a good, good question. It's a good question. Paul, big hit. Needed a fumble there. Bachmeyer under pressure. Walker, please. It hit Tim Washington in the freaking face. I switched on and pressed triangle immediately. I don't know if I switched on too late. It did say user SWAT. So I think it registered. He just didn't catch it. We need to score immediately and we need an onside kick. It's the only way we have a chance. We need to get an onside kick. If we don't get an onside kick, it doesn't matter. I mean, well, we can't even score. So does it matter anyways? Humphreys open enough. Good ball from Byers. Good gain. Should the clock keep moving? We only got out of bounds after all. And I'm telling you, I, 
Why did the clock keep moving in that situation earlier? Oh, check down. It doesn't really even matter how quickly we score here because we need an onside kick, which I feel like the odds of getting that are slim to none. Aaron Duvall, touchdown. It's too little too late. Shout out JoJo. It's too little too late. Of course, we got to go for two. Make this a touchdown game, but uh, it's, it's not looking great for Riverside. And Jesus. My line, I feel like, just didn't show up today. Did I miss something? Tell me I missed something so I can feel nice and good about it. I mean, you can't think I can throw to Ham in this situation. No, nah, they, they just lived in the backfield. I just feel like the, the tackle is always responsible. God, I mean, that's horrible. The tackle is always responsible for the edge player. Pretty much always. And he just didn't block. Now, th th there is that. They keep running this freaking, like, I want to call it a stunt, but these, he doesn't come over, so I, it's very odd. Um, now, you are taught to block the innermost guy first, but that's not where the pressure's coming from. He's just running in unblocked off the edge. We can't get the football out to anybody here. Just give me a chance, man. We are mathematically eliminated from the game. It, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. Boise State was a better team today. Hate to lose, obviously. I know it was all my fault, as always, but uh, it is what it is, dude. We gave it our best shot. Just didn't have it today. Offense didn't show up. Defense certainly didn't show up either. It's one of those games. Can't win them all. Just hate losing. I don't really even think we accomplished anything that we needed to. We just got killed. I mean, two interceptions obviously doesn't help. Four sacks. I mean, this is one of our worst games of the season. Just got... It's got, I mean, we couldn't even run the ball this way either. Pretty unfortunate. Two touchdowns for Michael Ham. It's just, uh, it's just one of those games. I don't really have too much to say about it. Sack for Craig Jackson, Malik James, and Phil Walker. No interceptions, obviously. Four tackles for loss for Craig Jackson, by the way. He has been amazing. Three for Greg Hall, two for Malik James, only one for. Uh, Joel Pitts and Phil Walker. So two for the D-line. So I don't even think we accomplished that goal either. Uh, just a tough one. It's kind of it. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick to the air raid. I think I'm going to stick to the air raid. Our offense had been working, changed it up incessantly, and I mean, obviously didn't play nearly as well as we needed to. I like how it says my coordinator's ready to upgrade, and he's not. So that's nice. And we have only one more game this season at UNLV, but we do have a ball game. We qualified, we're eight and three. We're not gonna be ranked this year. There's there's no way that that happens, unfortunately. So the big thing here is gonna be, did we get any commits? Cause this would be huge. Even though we didn't win, we could have signed some huge recruits. Did that happen? Yes. Marion Bates, Adam Daniel are both in. Two five stars coming to Riverside. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Willie also got 650 points like that. Now, someone also in the comments have pointed out this was interesting. Marion Bates is considered to be a quarterback. Coach of the year finalist, by the way. Coach of the year finalist. But Marion Bates is considered to be a quarterback. Which, yes, I am intrigued by that as well. Because, to me, it didn't really scream QB. Now, it's not that... He's not good at being quarterback. 84 throw power, 78 throw accuracy, 87 speed. That looks pretty good. Now, he's not the most elusive guy. I know he has 88 elusiveness, but juke spin very bad. Trucking bad. Break tackle not so good. It's like not terrible. But to me, I still like Marion Bates as a corner, not a quarterback. 87 speed, 85 zone, 83 man. I like that in the secondary. He's really good. He could be a QB. He could be a pretty good one. But with Adam Daniel, who's going to be a quarterback, I'll show you. 78 overall. He's got 84 speed, 87 throw power, 79 throw accuracy. What is his other position? Receiver. That's pretty much it. He's also really good with the football in his hands, by the way. 87 juke, 82 spin, 80 trucking. Decent enough break tackle at 78. 
carrying's a bit lower. But this guy can make a man miss. Also could be a receiver, right? With like 77 catching, 77 spectacular catch. Catch with traffic, nice 69. Route running's pretty good. Release pretty good. 84 speed isn't amazing. I like him to be our QB. Now I know there's the whole thing with Justin Bennett. Justin Bennett is slightly more accurate. Arm strength is not quite as good. And they're the same speed. I think he's a little bit worse with the football in his hand. In my opinion, I think he's just a little bit worse. But we'll have to see. This is a huge, huge day for us. Two five stars are committed to Riverside. So even though the episode in terms of beating Boise State, the game was a loss, I think the episode's a big win. Also, let's see where Russell Hudson is. Minus 565 for the Juco. What even is he? 6'5", He's a receiver, probably. Can't really do anything defensively. He's just a receiver. I don't know why they make these guys athletes, because they're not really. They can do one thing. You know, maybe he's a trash running back. Ugh. Looks pretty good, though. Might as well put 500 points in. Brent Good, we can take off. Clint Black, I actually did like quite a bit. Plus six gem, amazing speed at corner. Great zone coverage, huge bonus. Let's go after Clint Black. Nigel Clemens, we're in the race for. Kind of looks more like a safety to me with that zone coverage. Tackling's pretty low. Maybe we'll put points into him. Eric Scott looks pretty good. A little slow, but that's all right. William Royal, I just don't really need him. Like, it's a cool name. But we can't prioritize cool names. We gotta <laughs> we gotta get the good players first and foremost, I think. We'll offer him a scholarship though. If he wants to sign on, he can. And you know what? For this week, we'll put in 200 points. <laughs> We're not gonna get Nigel Clemens. I really don't care if we do either. He's fine. Not amazing. Only a 95 bonus. Did offer him a scholarship, but. I mean, I I really, really don't want William Royal. Sorry about that. We're going to put him in Nigel Clemens. Maybe we can steal him. It'd be pretty good. Pretty big for the program. Marcus Miller is ready for a visit, by the way. Who are you taking the lead on? From Carteret. We're going to schedule that. Ooh. Boston College has offered him a scholarship as well. Kind of anybody's game here. Well, we're on the road, so the only time we can schedule him is on the bye. We'll get points for him going there, but it's not big. We do fall a bit from 30 to 39. Hate to see it. But, you know, that's the way she goes sometimes. We, uh, we just couldn't beat them. And they are bowl eligible after beating us. You know what? Good for them. Good for them. Will, Lele, uh, Will Levis still trying to win that Heisman. Zamir White, Zach Charbonnet, Kyron Williams, to, uh, Talia, not to, uh, Talia Tungabailoa in there as well. But that'll do it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Recruiting has gone so, so well this year. We've gotten a bunch of huge recruits. And we are on the verge of getting some more. Let me just check out. Willie Hollins could sign. And in fact, he probably will before the offseason, which would be huge. Terrence Brown is going to be a fight in the offseason. We really, really want him. And we'll see on some of the other guys. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.